early in the morning and I'm just going down to the pool shore and going through with the old rigmarole of boots and uh, mud protective gear. So I shall see you in a minute. Well, I'm not here as early as I would have liked, but uh, here I am. And I'm going to take a leaf out of Nicola White Tide Line Arts book today and just show you the things I find on this very day. It's meant to be quite a low tide. I'm not sure if that's going to ring true. We've had a lot of rain, so um, we'll see. We'll see what I can get. Um, and I'll let you know. Well, I've just found this lovely penny and the tide's about to sweep in. There it is. Let's check it out. That is an Irish penny. You can just make out the heart there. Um, and on the back, there should be some kind of bird, I think. Well, we'll have a look at that later. It looks like a cockerel, but there was a brilliant illustrator who was commissioned to design these pennies after this currency was first introduced. I forget his name now, but I will give you the details later. Just as I was putting my penny away, I've just spotted this piece of lead shot. Love a piece of lead shot. Nice and heavy. Can't see the casting. Oh, there it is. There's the casting sprue. So I'll be taking that home with me too. Also here, this looks like the bottom of an 18th century apothecary bottle. You can see the bubbles in the glass there. And a pontil. I believe, well I will check this out because I'm not too hot on glass, but definitely has some age to it, you can see there. The wavy lines, and that leftover bit there, I think that's from making a pontil mark, but uh, I'll check it out when I'm home. Yet more lead shot here, little one. Two little ones. Very heavy lead shot. And in the same lovely little patch, there's a tiny. Oh dear, I've just picked up and it. There it is. There it is. There's a tiny fly button. Does it have any details on it? It does. I think. That might be a best ring edge or our own brand job. Mm, maybe not. I shall again have a look at that when I get home. Sweet thing. Rather a bad habit of taking bricks home with me, much to the chagrin of my better half. This is lovely, but I'm going to leave it here. I just wanted you to see it. Look at all these stabbing marks. I've just spotted a pipe, but whether the bowl is going to be on there, we shall see. This could be a very short reveal. Oh, okay, let's give it another tug. Not quite. this one here for someone else to find. This is just turned up. Is it a coin? Oh. Don't know. Feels like a coin. Oh, no, hang on. 
I've worked this down a little more. And I still can't work out what it is. It's a mystery. I'm sure people are screaming at the screen. They know what it is. But to me, that's a mystery. I'll have to ask one of my very learned friends. Moved up to a different area now. And turned this over. It's a lead seal. And it has got... Oh, has got some detail on it. Again, probably when I get home I'll have to look that up. Just having a little look down here, I've noticed this and I wonder, hmm, I get some coins. Oh, it's Queen Liz II. There we are. This just popped up. Could be nothing, of course. It could be have a mark or something on it. Mm, no, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it. But I'm going to stick to this area and see what else. Oh, hang on a minute. Could it be? I think it might be a minute. A little teaspoon handle or something, a fork handle. I don't know what that is. I thought it might be an EPNS electroplated nickel silver, but clean that up and we'll find out. I just wanted to try and show you just how many pins there are on the foreshore. Um, obviously, this was a huge industry and a way of fastening clothes, ruffs dresses, obviously buttons have been around but we used to use a hell of a lot of pins. And just as I was looking through the sand to show you the pins, this little Um, because it's not something I often spend a lot of time looking for. This is a sweet bit here. Another Tinglaze bed, I think. And I found this a minute ago, which is quite a tantalising little chunk. There's something a bit mook about it I think a bit screamish so I'll keep that little piece of delft wear mm, so it's tin glaze pottery and I think it might be part of a candlestick I can't resist a piece of tin glaze so I'm gonna take that home it's a very fragile glaze here and wears away very easily and you can see some pitting in there but I'm going to take that one with me and as if by magic where am I? aha I found a little cut glass diamante thing so there maybe I should spend more time looking at the pottery and being less metal inclined. I turn up loads of pieces of glass like this and copper in the hope that there will be something imprinted on it. So here, looks like some kind of tag with a company name maybe. Something limited. And L W something. L W R I L W I Company Limited. So it might have been on some goods that was being delivered somewhere. T W L Co Limited 13. 
got two little holes there, so it obviously fastened on something, some sort of tag. But I love that. I shall look them up when I get home. I mean, it might. Oh, TWB Co. Uh, have that. Have a look when I get home. Mm, might be quite a tricky one, but it would be good to have a research. Right, so the tide's coming up really quickly now. Um, it wasn't as low as I thought it was going to be today and uh, it's coming in really quickly just as I hit a great spot where lots of stuff was coming up. Anyway, we're going to have a look at what I found today and like I said in the beginning, the things you're going to see are what I found today. I'm taking the lead from Nick White, Tideline Art, who did this. I watched a video of hers recently where she just shows what she found in that on that day in the in the time she was at the foreshore so we're going to do the same okay so i've laid all my finds from today out on the sand here and uh i am gonna flip the camera around so you can see them so we've got some bag seals you can see some detail on them there i can see london something there's little sign we'll, we'll research i'll research these when i get back this one tent something london uh little spoon handle with some marks on that i'm gonna look up a couple of nice buttons a mystery object i don't know what that is perhaps a, i don't know i actually don't know what that is it's a mystery a lovely Irish penny, 1931 penny. This here, another thing for me to research, TWB Co Limited. Um, that might have uh, gone around a bundle of wires or cables or something. And it says 13 on it there. A couple of bits of pottery, uh, tin glaze, and this little bit here. I'd I don't know, it just uh, appeals to me how tiny it is. And then we've got little cut glass gem actually I thought this was a button when I picked it up it is a lead token 18th century lead token so we'll have a look at that later some lead shot here and um, another nice piece of delftware tin glaze uh, pottery which looks like it could have been possibly part of a candle stick go to bed candle stick or, or maybe mm, bowl I think I think a candlestick that's what I'm saying and uh, so yeah here's the lead token it's a uniface token so it's I only got that on one side nothing on the other side and so this little mystery object I'm gonna ask some people about this I wondered if it was a button but it says something on it there and then dd it's taking a whack to it there um so i'll look this stuff up when i get home and let you all know but this is all what i've decided to take home with me today after an hour and a half on the foreshore right i'm back home and I've cleaned a couple of bits up. This here, this bag seal, um, I've managed to identify it. It is Hubbocks of London and they were paint manufacturers. Now this is a white, this is a lead bag seal for a white zinc paint and this would have secured the um, delivery of goods wherever it was going. Now they had a warehouse very close to where I was this morning um, and actually funny enough when I went online to research them I found that Simon Bourne, Cy Fines had also found one of these. Um, so thanks to him I actually managed to ID it straight away and Simon actually I think got in touch with uh, the grandson or great grandson, someone someone in the uh, Hubbock family and found out that the um, <clears throat> factory was actually, the warehouse uh, was actually 
built at the end of the 18th century um, and they were a huge paint distributor so um, that's what that is. I think uh, this one might be the same. This one's knackered though so I'm not even attempting a clean up of that. This here is my little Irish penny, uh, 1931, beautiful harp on it. And on the back there is a cockerel running, or a hen, cockerel or hen running. Um, I'll put some information up on, on the screen about that. This, no idea, I don't know what that is. Some tag or a button back, I, don't, I just don't know. If I do find out, I will of course let you know. Uh, this tried to give it a bit of a clean up, actually it looked worse for cleaning. It's a uh, little lead token, 18th century token. That there. I suspected this is just a stock button, it says on it. Uh, double ring edge, you can't actually remake it out, but I've had a number of these so I know exactly what it is um, and then and there's the spoon again spoon handle I've just had a further look at the spoon which is a pewter spoon and I was trying to find some information out about these marks here and it seems to me that they are in fact what's known as pseudo marks pseudo hallmarks which um, were put on there to mimic silver. When pewter is first very fresh um, and new, it's very silver looking, silver like, and uh, the pewterer would put these marks on, not to fool the buyer, I mean the buyer knew what they were buying, but it was for when you had dinner parties and you got your best cutlery out in the sort of, it's believed that people bought these in the hope that they could convince their or fool their guests that they were actually using silverware and not pewter. Uh, the marks there say, I think, H, H, maybe, yep, S, and then just there, it, there's either a cross or I think a sword mark, and that is a star there. So I'm going to email some pewter people and see if they could tell me anything about that, because actually if you look online, uh, there are some very famous um, or very well known pseudo marks um, that are attributed back to the pewter. So let's see if I can find out who made this. Now, the final thing that cleaned up really nicely is this brass plaque TWB Company Limited 13. Um, so. Who knows? TWB Company. I'll go and have a look for them now and uh, see see what I find. Yeah.